welcome to today's edition of Frightfully Forgotten. What are we drinking today, Justin? Uh, we're drinking uh, Nosferatu in Exile. It's a uh, German Hefweizen. Today we're going to be talking about 1977's The Sentinel, directed by Michael Winner, and he actually directed Death Wish 1, <laughs> 2, and 3. Yeah, <laughs> the third one's the best! It's based on the novel by Jeffrey Convitz, and he's also a producer of movies <laughs> like Cyborg 2 and <laughs> oh, yeah. Bloodsport 2 and all these weird action sequels. Quite the stacked cast. The main male lead is Chris Sarandon. He was yeah. in Child's Play. He was in Fright Night. He's the uh, Prince Humperdinck from <laughs> Princess Bride. Along with him is Christina Raines. She wasn't in anything like super notable, but mostly just tons and tons of TV. Joining them is everybody. Burgess Meredith, Jeff Goldblum, Christopher Walken is in this. Doesn't even really have any lines. I think he says like two words in the whole movie. <laughs> yeah, it's one of his best performances. Yeah. Eli Wallach is in it. John Carradine. Ava Gardner. Tom Berenger is in this. Chris Credited as the man at the end. Like, doesn't <laughs> yeah. even have a name. The movie starts off with Allison. She's a model. She's looking for an apartment. Her real estate agent shows her a house. This perfect house. It's all furnished. It's everything she wants. Along with her that's going to be in the house is a priest. And he lives upstairs. He's a blind priest. And he stares out the window. If he's blind, what is he looking at, right? Yeah. So it's kind of weird. Burgess Meredith's character comes down to meet her. He's got his bird on his <laughs> on his shoulder and his cat. He all leaves a picture of himself on the mantle for her. He's eccentric nonetheless. Yeah. There's two odd women she meets as well, and she learns that they're lesbians. They're having, like, tea or coffee, and the older one gets up and walks away. The younger one, she's all staring <laughs> at uh, Allison, and she starts masturbating, and it's, like, super awkward. What would you do in that yeah. situation? And then she goes to leave, and the older woman gets mad at her, saying she's rude for leaving. <laughs> Isn't your friend here rude for masturbating in front of me? <laughs> Burgess Meredith invites Allison up to his apartment for a birthday party for his cat. She meets the rest of the people in the apartment and they're equally strange. So Allison goes to lunch with her real estate agent. She explains that, you know, she's met a few people living in the apartment. Then the real estate agent tells her, well, that's impossible because no one else lives in that apartment building except for you and the priest on the top floor. Then they go together and she takes her through all of the suites and they're completely empty. One night when she hears noises going on in the apartment, she kind of gets up to explore a little bit finally. And then you just see this shadow of this figure kind of standing there in this doorway and it's really creepy. Her dead father, rotten looking and dead, takes his knife, cuts off his nose and starts stabbing him in the face. <laughs> so Allison kind of maybe thinks she's going nuts. She doesn't know what's happening to herself. So the boyfriend does, decides to do a bit of digging himself into the history of this apartment. He finds out it's owned by the church. So they break into the church at night. He starts pulling out these documents and looking at them. They date back to like the 1700s. Each page is a document about a person. They all went missing. Yeah. And then reappeared a day later as either a nun or a priest. The last page he gets to, a picture of Allison, the day she's supposed to go missing. And then a blank, a blank spot. A blank spot. Watch the movie to find out what's going to happen to Allison, and what exactly this apartment is all about. A typical 70s slow burn kind of movie that is a, you get a huge payoff at the end. Quite the payoff. Yeah, and it's very horror. Most of the movie isn't that much of a horror movie, besides the scene where she cuts her dad, all, she cuts up. Her dad all up. But the ending is very horror. Reminded me a lot like The Shining. Kind of yeah, when yeah. Wendy runs into yeah. all that weird shit, right? Yeah. One of the things that you have to forgive in this movie is the acting because it's subpar, yeah. I think, you know. From the leads. Right. Everyone else is pretty good, of course. It's okay. Yeah. I noticed Jeff Goldblum's performance is quite yeah. lagging. <laughs> kind of phony. Yeah. 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 But Burgess Meredith is really good in this. Oh, yeah. He's really creepy. The music with this movie, it doesn't complement a lot of the scenes, right? It feels very made-for-TV-like. Yeah, it does, for sure. Yeah. But I found the music at the end got better. Yeah. Like, it, it really helped a lot of the scenes along with really feeling nerve-wracking and, like, the tension. 
Yeah. So yeah, in some places the music is kind of boring and just kind of muzak in a way. Yeah. But in some places I find it does work. The effects are quite good in this movie. Oh, there, yeah. there there isn't much of them, but when they are there, it's really good. Yeah, it's worth it. Yeah, that scene where she carves up her dead dad, like it looks really good. It's wicked. Yeah. Another odd thing about this movie is there's a lot of subplots happening that don't go anywhere. Yeah. And I think that's because it is adapted from a book, and in the book those subplots were probably, you know, fleshed out a lot more. Right. Had a lot more to do with the character building and stuff. But in this movie, it probably wasn't necessary to put any of that in there. Because it no. kind of took away from the movie. It's like a whole subplot about the boyfriend, Michael. His ex-wife had died. Yeah, committed suicide. Committed suicide. And there's this detective who's played by Eli Wallach. And his assistant, who's played by Christopher Walken, <laughs> who are always kind of suspect of him. It that doesn't whole, go anywhere, That whole though. plot goes nowhere and doesn't really need to be in the movie. I can yeah. see it maybe needing to be in a book, but in the movie it didn't serve a purpose whatsoever. Yeah, like I could see if they maybe arrested him at the moment when he was trying to save Allison yeah. or something. Yeah. Then, okay, there's yeah. a whole point to that. But yeah. nothing happened. They just disappeared out of the movie yeah. after. I was like, oh, okay. Oh. Eli Wallach is good in this though he's good in everything he's good in everything his ties are like super fat I've never, I don't think I've ever seen a tie so big in my life it like takes up his whole like body it's like a vest yeah it is like a vest but the story is what really makes this movie shine I think yeah yeah I really love the originality of it right I mean uh, somebody somebody up in an attic, peering out the window as kind of like this guardian. Any horror movie with religion is scary. Too. Yeah. Like, as long as it's done properly. Yeah. There was actually a lot of controversy about the ending scene. They hired a bunch of disfigured people. A lot of people found that very distasteful, exploiting these people, but, well, they agreed to be in the movie, and I'm sure they were paid to be in the movie, so... Yeah, yeah. The first time I watched this movie, I actually didn't really care too much for it. The second time I watched it for this review, I really like it. Yeah. Like, I, I really like this movie. So, if you're a fan of movies like uh, Changeling, which we've covered, The Entity, which we've covered... The Shining? Just yeah. mention that? Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like The Shining too. Any kind of horror movie to do with religion, so stuff like... The Exorcist, The Exorcist, obviously. The Omen, Rosemary's Baby, stuff like that. Uh, all those 70s kind of... Religion horror movies, definitely check out The Sentinel. Good payoff, and you may not sleep that night. <laughs> I did. Yeah. I did. <laughs>